My friends, I'm a reasonable man. I am not, I'm not swayed by emotional arguments. I just want to know what is true, what works. And I want to make people live better lives. And I tell you this right now, Trump shall have his revenge and he shall have his retribution. So he wills it. And if he doesn't, and if he wants to go the light route, well, so he wills it. Donald Trump won. He won the mandate. Decision Desk has called the House. The Times hasn't, but Decision Desk did. They say Republicans got the House, the Senate, Supreme Court, the presidency, and Trump has a mandate. Part of that mandate largely is a restoration of equality under the law. And that means, well, some might call it revenge. Some might call it retribution. I'm okay with retribution. I'm not a big revenge guy. That's too emotional. You know, facts don't care about your feelings, right? But we need the facts on our side, and the facts are as such. A nation cannot stand when a large political faction weaponizes the justice system against its political opponents. So I ask you all not for revenge. May you have it so you want it. I ask you all for equality under the law and accountability. But the media, of course, for the left is losing their minds. DOJ lawyer provides roadmap to slowing down Trump's revenge minded maniacs. So, look, sometimes I will, you know, sort of sort of a joke, say revenge. But what I really mean is accountability. And I'll give you the quick gist before we run through all of the articles of all of the Democrats terrified that Donald Trump will get his retribution. Now, first, let me say I, I don't mind retribution. Retribution, divine retribution, righteous retribution does not imply the same kind of emotional reaction as revenge does. Revenge is someone who's like, I suffered, therefore you must. Retribution is you must face the penalty for your unjust actions. And we will prove to the people that we're right. So I say it. Donald Trump doesn't need revenge. He needs accountability. And we all do. They're terrified that in places like New York, Trump will launch a civil rights case, conspiracy against civil rights charges against those in New York. Judge Mershon has postponed his ruling as to whether or not he's going to throw out the 34 felony charges. I'll start here. Many of you, uh, if you are a liberal and you find yourself here, I thank you for attending this seminar by me. Someone maybe shared with you the video, but I'll explain to you why the 34 fraud charges are bunk. I'll explain to you why the sexual uh, assault liability charge is bunk and also why the civil fraud charges are bunk. And it's true. You know, look, Democrats are downstream. Their whole worldview is downstream from hoaxes, as Greg Gutfeld said. In New York, Donald Trump was accused of falsifying business records in furtherance of another crime. We don't know what that other crime was. It's simple. That charge is a misdemeanor. If you want to charge Trump with 34 misdemeanors, okay. well, I guess. Unfortunately, the misdemeanor charges were beyond their statute of limitations. So they had discovered the accusation. They alleged a crime, but they never brought charges. And now they can't. The only way they could was to upgrade it to felonies by claiming that he committed this uh, falsification in furtherance of another crime. The law typically requires if the government is going to accuse a person of a crime to prove it. I say typically, but literally it's called due process rights. They did not allege a secondary crime at all. They just made the the claim they were felonies. Okay, well, that is a conspiracy against rights thrown out. Secondly, the civil fraud case, Donald Trump delivered an assessment of his properties to his lenders, to the to, to the, the banks. In these, it was testified to that there was a disclosure. The numbers listed in these may be wrong and the bank is required to do their own due diligence. That's normal for any lender. The lender said we reviewed the disclosure, approached Mr. Trump's company and said, we believe these numbers are incorrect. And so the loan you're asking for will be reduced to a different number. The Trump organization said, you got it. New York claimed that Trump defrauded the bank by giving false numbers. But like with any disclosure, The disclaimer states the numbers could be wrong. It's a massive document. They said Trump overstated the size of his penthouse from 10,000 to 30,000. Maybe he did. Maybe it was intentional. But the bank said they were instructed that they had to do due diligence. The numbers could be wrong. They were wrong. And they just came back and said, we'll give you less money. 
Trump agreed. Everybody was happy. The loan paid back was paid back. The bank made money. Why was Trump sued for this? The lender said, we like Mr. Trump. We want to keep working with Mr. Trump. Then the sexual liability. There's no evidence. There's literally none. It's a 30 year, 30 year old case that could only be brought about because a special law was passed to allow victims to make accusations and sue for civil damages if uh, 30 years later with no evidence. So none of this moves the needle for any of us. But Trump needs accountability across the board for, for all the lies and the accusations. And this is what they're saying now. Well, over at The Atlantic, they write Trump's deep state revenge. It's not just these cases I've mentioned. You also have Jack Smith going after Donald Trump on these federal charges, which are bunk. And so what happens? Not only were the charges dropped, the feds have backed off the case. Weird, really? Well, we can't go after a sitting president. Fine. Jack Smith is planning to retire before Trump takes office. He knows what's coming next. These people, all of these people are not facing revenge or retribution. They're going to face accountability for the weaponization of the law for political power. And they have to. Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, two former Trump administration officials, were held in contempt of Congress. Fine. They went to prison. Fine. Congratulations, Democrats. Justice, right? Merrick Garland defied a congressional subpoena and was held in contempt of Congress and flouted the law and did not go to prison. We as a country cannot exist if Democrats imprison a Democratic administration, imprisons former Republican administration officials. And then when their guy does the same crime, they say no jail time. This is how you get destabilization in a country. Trump has no choice. I'm not convinced he'll do it. I'm not convinced the people that are in office right now have the strength of will to do what must be done. But it's simple. Quite dispassionately, Donald Trump should say, or whoever he appoints to attorney general, Merrick Garland, the former attorney general under the previous administration was held in contempt of Congress. This typically will will get you a few months in prison. Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon were also held in contempt of Congress around the same time period and served their time. We must have equality under the law. So, as I stated quite dispassionately, they should say Merrick Garland, for this reason, will be charged, indicted and face jail time the same as anyone else. There will be no special treatment. That's it. And they can say, look, you're not going to be shackled. You're not going to put on a jumpsuit. You're going to go to a minimum security holding facility for four months. That's what Democrats wanted for Navarro and Bannon. And that's what Merrick Garland should get all the same. It's the rules Democrats asked for. And I think that's fair. I do. As for Jack Smith, special counsel Jack Smith reportedly plans to retire before President-elect Trump takes office in January, denying the incoming president a chance to fire him. Smith, who oversaw the federal criminal case against Trump related to the 70 year old's attempt to overturn the election and the hoarding of classified documents is wrapping up his work ahead of the 47th president's inauguration on January 20th. The New York Times reported his plan is to get ahead of Trump's promise to fire him within two seconds after being sworn in. How much you want to bet this guy leaves the country? Special counsel Jack Smith speaks during a press conference. We can see this image here. Trump indicted. He intends to finish his work before Trump re uh, regains power and goes after those who brought criminal charges against him. I will say this to you all, my friends. There's no off ramp. Trump is, uh, as of right now, he's he's in D.C. You can see here his triumphant return to, return to Washington. He's meeting with Joe Biden. There's no off ramp. Right now, we're seeing liberal personalities say Donald Trump is going to weaponize this to go after his enemies. They don't care that we all sat here and watched as they lied for eight years. Can you believe it? about Donald Trump to try and destroy this man's life. And he still won. I am not asking for revenge, as I've stated. I'm asking for accountability. They falsely accused Trump of being a traitor. Yeah, they said he was a Russian spy and he got elected to the presidency. They impeached him because he was investigating the Burisma scandal. They lied in the media about the scandal. After this, they tried to put him in jail several times. And Democrats cheer this on. I'm sorry. I am a reasonable person. And were the Democrats to have not done any of this, 
then my attitude would be very much we should not be going after anybody. When Trump said, we're not going to put Hillary in jail, we're going to be nice. I said, sure, fine, whatever. You know, it's 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 he's being hyperbolic. And what was that? Trump showed his belly. They saw him as weak. They said, really? He's not going to do anything. So what did they do? They made a fake dossier. They accused him of insurrection. They impeached him for being a Russian spy. They impeached him again for insurrection. He beat all of these charges. They made up fake charges in New York with no underlying crimes. And now they are terrified that there will be justice and accountability. Take a look at this on the Raw story. Before I read, however, let me say, Casbrew.com. Buy our coffee, support our work. Link in the description below. It's, uh, we sponsor ourselves. Soon we will have many more sponsors, but uh, for now we sponsor ourselves. And head over to TimCast.com. Click join us to get involved and support the work we do directly. Tens of thousands of people are waiting at our Discord server. They want to be friends with you. And I'm, I'm not really joking. I mean, they literally say, hey, Tim, can you promote the Discord more often? Because they've got video game servers. They've got meetups, pre-shows, after shows. And it's a tremendous resource for all of you who want to get involved in the movement and be more directly involved in how this country is shaped politically. It is through the efforts of all of our members who fund TimCast, who get involved, that we had whatever influence we did on this political machine, albeit small but good enough. Why? Because every different show that exists out there in the independent space proved that through our combined efforts, our influence helped make this country better. But let's read. Raw Story says Donald Trump's election victory of Vice President Kamala Harris already has staffers at the DOJ planning their exits. Good. Fearful they will be either fired because they're not considered loyal or because they want no part of what is expected to be a wave of investigations of his enemies. These people are despicable. According to a report from Politico, some career DOJ officials, for some career DOJ officials, their worst dreams have come true. Believe the department will be highly politicized in a way as it never been before, except, I don't know, the last eight years. Trump made this mistake. He gets into office and he did not clean house. I'm not confident he's going to fix it this time. I said it before, I'll say it again. Trump will be a marginally good president for us. With a, with a thin majority in the House, we're going to get marginally good things. It's not going to be the revolution. This is why I tell you right now, if you do not remain vigilant these next 18 months, the Democrats will take the House. When they do, Trump will not get any more than this. If we stand firm, if Trump starts to reform and secure our federal election processes, we may yet save this country. But the battle begins now. They go to say in an interview with Politico's Josh Gerstein, one DOJ prosecutor admitted, Everyone I've talked to, mostly lawyers, are losing their minds. The fear is that career leadership and career employees everywhere are either going to leave or they're going to be driven out. <laughs> Good. I'm excited. According to the report, some staffers were around during the first Trump administration and survived by keeping their heads down. Trump should have fired them. But, an, but expect the second round under a vengeful Trump will be near to impossible. With Gersey reporting, they know Trump's anger at the department is only deepened in the past four years as it launched two unprecedented criminal prosecutions against him. According to one attorney who plans to stick around, they would like to see others follow suit because even if they can't derail the Trump vengeance change, they can slow it down. Understand this, my friends. What they are telling you is that federal employees are seeking to obstruct the popular mandate, the will of the people in Donald Trump's agenda. When they say they could stop it, derail it or slow it down, they are spitting in your face and saying, we will not let the American people have their way. Shouldn't there be with the popular mandate? These people saying, I guess that's what the public wants. Nope. Trump must fire them for the love of all that is holy. Please get Cash Patel as FBI director. AG would be great. I don't know what Cash wants to do, though. But we need. He's got to get in somewhere because I don't trust a lot of these people. And. You know, maybe it's a little simplistic, but knowing Cash and having talked to him and had him on the show and gone over all of these things, I feel confident if we get him in, we get positive outcomes, what we've been hoping for. And right now they're floating his name for FBI director. I will take it. I don't know. Cash, you want to be AG? I want an AG. I want an attorney general who I know is going to go after those who must. And I'm not going to pretend that even with Cash or anybody else, I get the pie in the sky that I'm looking for. I'm not naive. There's political realities to whether or not you can actually arrest Merrick Garland. I think he should go to jail. I think that's the reasonable thing to do. 
I would not be surprised if the overall majority of people who I even like would not do that. Me? If it was me? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I play, I play no games. And uh, it's, it's probably why it's, it would never be anyone like me. And, and, and I, I, I'm not trying to act like I would be anywhere near that office. I'm saying you're never going to see me in public office, nor should I have public office. I'd be crazy. Like the things I do, I, you know what I would do? I would get 12 inch bulletproof plexiglass and I would make a pod in, in the, uh, the middle of Freedom Plaza in DC. And I would conduct my entire presidency from there as I signed wave after wave of executive order, destroying the deep state, just ripping it to shreds. And the reason for the bulletproof plexiglass is because I've grown quite fond of living and I'd like to get the job done. That being said, it's not necessarily a reasonable thing to do to rapidly just dismantle things, but as much as I am not a staunch libertarian, I'd probably just be like, it is time to knock the, the machine down and reconstruct. If that's what, that's what it, if, if it were me. But that's why I probably shouldn't be, because I'm crazy. Anyway, former White House lawyer Norm Eisen agreed. They should absolutely stay. That's easy for me to say because I don't have to deal with the boss who's appointed by Donald Trump every day. But I know from my own experience in government that you can't just show up and snap your fingers. And the continuity of that career civil service staff will be very, very important to the preservation of the republic. They mean the deep state. Donald Trump has learned about how to manage the federal bureaucracy. So sure, it's going to be worse. That doesn't mean it'll be easy for him. So I think it will be important for people to stay put. No, it's it's it, it better get done. It better, better get done. Because I tell you. Texas Attorney General seeks orders to preserve Jack Smith's Trump records. Ken Paxton asked a judge to order Mr. Smith, the special counsel, to, uh, to have Jack Smith preserve his records and avoid obstruction of accountability. I'm excited for this. But I'll tell you what, my friends. I would not be surprised if Trump doesn't clean house. I'm, I'm actually, I believe it's a greater than chance probability. Trump, I mean, his appointment of Pete Hegseth was based AF. I'm not saying Pete's perfect. I'm, I, I don't think anyone he could appoint would be perfect. But the mental breakdown Democrats are having over this, he actually launched Doge with Elon and Vivek. He's got Tom Homan as borders are. And they go, these aren't even real jobs. I don't care. He's telling you what he, in, he in, intends to do. And I'm here for it. Trump needs to get this house cleaned up, period. He needs to. The Irish Times reports as Trump returns to power, adversaries fear a wave of revenge. You should. You are evil, evil people. Even right now, despite the fact that Donald Trump has won, they are saying they will obstruct his administration. They don't believe in democracy. When Donald Trump was trying to withdraw our troops from Syria, military leadership lied to him to keep troops in Syria. They lied to the American people. There's now a popular mandate. Trump won the popular vote, the House, the Senate. He's got it all. The people have spoken. What do they decide instead? They will stay. They will obstruct. So Trump has one choice. He must fire them all. But they say, you know, it won't be so easy for him. All right, let's play a game. Trump. You know, this may not seem like, to be honest, it's not a punishment to me. I think you should set up a new FBI office in uh, or a DOJ office in Unalaska. Unalaska is in the Aleutians. And uh, whenever I say this, the Alaskans are like, stop, Tim. No, don't send them here. We don't want them. OK, how about, I don't know, Nevada, New Mexico. Build an office in the middle of nowhere. You'll use government funds to create a local economy. And then all you got to do is we call that the um, the phantom zone. And for all these bureaucrats that can't be fired, you transfer them. You say, we got a new uh, destination for you. You're going to go live in the middle of the desert in New Mexico. The Mojave is a, is a calling. Is the, does the Mojave stretch that far, actually? It does, doesn't it? I'm going to look at a map to make sure I'm right. The Mojave Desert. Give me the full uh, full expanse of the Mojave. It doesn't, does it? No, it doesn't. No, I, I guess I guess it doesn't. Oh, you know what's cool though is the uh, Cibola National Forest. That's a cool place, by the way. Is that still the Mojave Desert? 
You know, now now I don't know. Anyway, send him to, <laughs> send him to the desert. Oh, okay, the Mojave is actually not that big. It's actually just outside, outside of L.A., so nowhere near. Okay, then what desert is uh, in New Mexico? I say New Mexico because everyone's like it's already a communist country anyway. So anyway, I digress. Oh, okay, wait, what's this? Oh, is, I think the Mojave does stretch all that. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry. It's the uh, Chihuahuan, the Chihuahuan Desert. Huh. Send them there. Let's go. Is that what it's called? There's a couple other. The Colorado Plateau. We got tons of places to send these bureaucrats who are trying to burn the country down. I'm not saying you got to fire them. Maybe you can't. Okay, in all seriousness, though, here's what I want to see. Donald Trump going in dispassionate, cold faced and saying, look, you guys are fired. Okay, and he can come out and say that the termination of these employees is not because we want revenge. It's because the people of this country have a mandate. They have decided that the system is not working properly and they want to see new employees and they want to see the government cleaned up. That's all. Democrats will whinge about it. They'll scream and claim it's Trump's revenge no matter what he does. So Trump needs to be a stern father and say, look, sometimes no matter what you do, the kid's going to cry. You got to make the hard choice and be a man. Hoping. Smash that like button. Share the show with everyone you know. Become a member over at TimCast.com. Join the Discord server. We got more segments coming up today. Stick around, and we'll see you all shortly.